Now that we have our Redbubble shop set up and we've added items to our store, we want to be able to direct users from our website to the store. While Redbubble allows you to get started quickly, it's not the most ideal way to sell items because the commission is so high. But absent another method of sending out products to people, it is a really convenient way to sell items as you're getting started. There are a couple different ways that we can add our items to our website or direct users to our shop. The easiest way would be to go to Redbubble. And on the website, if you click your profile icon, you can click View Shop. And then we can delete everything but shop. Copy this link right here. So that's redbubble.com slash people, your username, then shop. And then we can simply change the shop.html to our Redbubble store. We would have to do this on the footer and the header. And just do that on every page, and then you're all set. And then if I click on shop, I would go to my shop. This is a perfectly fine way to do it, but you can also have these items embedded on your actual website. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, I'm going to undo those two changes to my template page. And then I'm going to select everything on my template page, copy it, make a new file, call this shop.html, then paste all of my code. So now this is shop.html. And then on my live server, I need to refresh the page and then I'll click on shop. It looks exactly the same because now it just has the template information. Let's type in the HTML that we need to have our embedded shop. First, in between the header and the footer, let's make a main tag and then we'll give it a class of shop page. Inside the main tag, let's add a section. Let's give it a class of text box. Inside our text box, let's have an H1, and we'll call this shop. After the H1, let's have a paragraph, and we'll just put some lorem ipsum text in here, but you would wanna put something about the items that you have for sale. So I can type lorem 25. If I save that, we see in the live server, we have shop and a dummy paragraph. So now after that section of text box, let's make a new section, and we'll give it a class of shop box. Now inside our shop box, we're gonna get some code from Redbubble. So navigate to your Redbubble site, click on your profile and go to your dashboard. Inside your dashboards, you can link to other sites. Scroll down to the bottom and it says, show off your work on your own website. So what we can do is we can copy this script and then we can paste it in between the two section tags of shop box. And if I save that and I go to my shop page, now you can see that I have a four by four grid of my items. And we can easily change how many we want. So we can make this three by four and that will give us 12 items. But you can see that there's a problem. It works fine here and we can see the space for 12 items, but it's not centered. And when we go to our mobile sizes, everything gets smashed. Well, we can fix that with CSS. So I've moved my CSS into the side panel so I can see my CSS and my code. In our CSS, we want to keep everything in order just like we did before. In between the gallery styles and the footer, I'm going to put a comment. So these will be the styles for our embedded shop page. First, let's style the actual main container shop page. Here we'll give it the, the standard padding we've been giving to all our pages. And if I save that, already the top part looks better because we can see we have padding on the left. Now let's style the H1. And for the H1, we'll give it a font size of three rem and a line height of three rem. That's starting to look a little bit better. Currently, we have the paragraph that goes all the way across the screen. This can be very hard to read. So remember, we have our H1 and our P inside our text box. So we can style that directly. If we type shop page and then text box, this is styling the class of text box that's inside shop page. Here, we can give it a max width of 80 characters. Now you might think that this will always make it 80 characters wide. That's not true. It's different for different typefaces. Now you can see that it has a limited width. 
the character uses the zero width. So every typeface has different width zeros unless it's a monospace font. So you just have to experiment with the typeface you're using. For me, this was a good width for this size font. Then we want to give it a top and bottom margin of zero and a left and right margin of auto. And this will automatically center it. So now we have this shop and our description that will stay easy to read even on big screens and it's centered. But we still have to deal with these goofy tiles. If you look at our HTML, all we have is this JavaScript that we got from Redbubble. What we want to do is find out what kind of code this is putting on our page. We can easily do that by going to our web developer, Inspector. This is different in every browser, but usually there's a menu in the top right. What this does is allow us to inspect different pieces of our code. And if we look here, we can see that it has added this iframe. And it tells us how wide and tall it is. And an iframe is something that embeds content from another website. We can't control anything inside the iframe. It has its own CSS. But what we can do is look at the width and the height. We put a three by four grid. So we can change that to a one by one grid. Now we only have one square. And if we look down in our code, we can see that the iframe a certain size. Here we have the iframe has a size of 266 wide and 307 high. Well, we can use that information to actually style it so it stays put. So I'm going to use that 266. I'm going to go back to my styles.css. And remember, the iframe is in a section called shop box. I'm going to give the shop box a width of 266 pixels. Then I'm also going to give the shop box a margin zero on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right. And if I save that, now we have our item centered in the page. And we can do this for all of our items. If we change this back to our original three by four and save it, notice that it doesn't work. I'm going to close this for now. We need to tell the iframe to have a width of 100%. So we can target that iframe by going shop box, if I save that, notice now we have all of our shop items in line, but look, they get cut off on the bottom. What gives? Well, if you think about it, the iframe has a height. We have to give the iframe a height that's big enough to hold 12 images. We can do that by typing 12 and saving. Then we can use the inspector to find out how tall this iframe is. If I look in the inspector, and then I can look at the iframe, and it says it's 2,000. 749 pixels tall. So if I have 12 items, then I want to have it 2,749. So I'm going to do that here. And I'm going to put in a comment so I remember what that is. And remember, we are coding for mobile first, so that's what we want. So now what I can do is I can put this back to a three by four. Just think about this as how many items you want. This is going to be 12 items. We're going to style each breakpoint so it works. And if I save this, notice that now I have the height is large enough for all of my items when they're in a single column. But when I move it out like this, I want it to be responsive. So what we need to do is set breakpoints. So we coded it for mobile first, but then we want to have it work when it gets a little bit bigger. So we'll set some extra breakpoints. So once it's 506 pixels wide, the screen, we'll make the shop box 506 pixels wide. This will allow us to have two columns now when we get 506 pixels. And then if we go smaller on mobile first, it's like this. Now if we scroll down, notice that it's extra tall. We don't want it to be that tall, so we need to change the height of the iframe. And I'm going to put a comment. So this is for six items tall. And if I save this now, notice that now my footer is in a good spot. So this is easy math to do. You start with how many do you want? So this is 12 items. If I have two columns, right? 12 divided by two is six. Then I need to find out how many is six items tall. And I can do that very easily 
by just typing in a six in the first digit here, saving it. Then I can look in my inspector. And if I look at the iframe, it tells me how tall right here, 14, 17. And that's what we used. But now we want to have it so it has three also. I'm going to switch this back to our 12 items. Let's code in the next breakpoint. So we're going to have min width of 746. This is for three columns. Then we need to change the shop box width. And if I save that, it now allows for three columns, but we still need to get rid of this white space. If we have 12 items, we know that the maximum height is four tall. Now, if I save that, all that extra white space is now gone. Now we have to do it for four columns across. So at a min width of 986 pixels across, we'll change the shop box width to 986 pixels. This gives us the four columns across now. And then we just need to change the height of the iframe. Because we are using 12 items, we know that if we have four columns, it's always going to be three tall. So that's how we can calculate that height. Now we just need to do it for five columns. So at a min width of 1,226 pixels, we change the shot box to the same, and now we can have five across. And because five does not divide into 12 without having this extra row, we can just leave the height the same. So you can decide how many items that you want to display from Redbubble, then you can make these media query breakpoints work out for making multiple columns. And then you just have to adjust the height. And you can always type in a number to find out this exact height that you need. This is, this is a fine, easy way to embed your Redbubble items. And it will automatically update with the 12 most recent items on your page. The problem is you can't exactly tell what product this is linking to. So if I click on Pumpkins for Life, I don't know if I'm going to get a print and then if I reload this page, and then I click on Pumpkins for Life again, now I'm getting a wall print. So I can change that by actually picking which one I want and then downloading an image and linking directly to that item. It's more work and it has to be done manually, but you can have more custom features if you so choose. So if I go to my profile and then I go to my dashboard, I can share my work then I can download these product images and I can select which item that I want. So if I can sell a t-shirt or anything specific. If I want to have this tote bag for sale, I can download the images and they have different options. So you can download different ones. I'm going to download this square one right here. So now it's downloaded. And then I can view the product page. Here's the product page. I can copy this link, still inside main, but below the section of shop box, I'm gonna add a new section. I'm gonna call it section curated shop. So I'm going to make a div with a class of shop item. Inside this div, I'm going to add a link. That link will go to the shop page. So here's the link for the shop page. What is the trigger for that link? I want to use the image. So if you go to your file explorer here in your downloads folder, you'll see this image. I can then move that image to my desktop and then inside my page and then put it in my image folder. You can make a separate folder or shop if you want. I'm just going to leave it right here. So now I need to type IMG, enter. Then I can type IMG slash and I find the work image. I want to give it an alt tag. So tote bag for sale with cute cat. And if I save that and go back to our page, you'll see that we have this huge image. Well, that's not very helpful. Uh, it's so big, but it links directly to that image. So I wanna, add an, I wanna add an H2. So that tells me what I'm selling. Then I can add a paragraph. The green cat on a tote bag is, is the perfect way to haul your goodies around town. And then I can add another link I can copy this link that goes to the shop page. And then for the link text, I can say buy now. And if I save that, now I have this heading and everything is inside this div class shop item. What I want to do now is 
add some CSS to this shop item. So below these media queries inside the shop section of our CSS, I can add some new CSS. So let's first, let's deal with the curated shop. I want to display grid, and then we can make a grid just like we did in our image gallery. I can do grid template columns. Then I can do repeat. And if you remember this code from before, we can do auto fit. So as many as we can fit. And then min max 300 pixels for one fractional unit. And if I save that, it still looks the same because there's only one item. Let's go ahead and add some more items. If this was in your gallery, you'd want to go download different images, but I'm just going to duplicate this image right here. So I can copy everything from this div to here. And if I save that, now you can see I have these cat tote bags, but they're right next to each other. So I want to add a grid gap. Now it has a grid gap. We can style all this text with CSS as well. We can style the paragraphs. And now you look, the paragraphs do not have margins, so now the by now is much closer. And then we can move the cat tote bag header closer in. And finally, let's style the link so it's not blue. We still want to keep the underline so people know it's a link. Remember, they can click the picture or the link. So I've made the shop item A have a color of black. Now if I see this, we can have the buy now. And you can add as much padding to this as you want. You can change the scale of these and style it in any way you want. And what's really great is now this has the same responsiveness. You can have it look just how you want, but you have to code these individually, where if you just drop in the JavaScript code, you won't have a choice of what shows up, but uh, you don't have to do any extra coding. So once you have your shop looking the way you want, Make sure you commit your changes. Click on source control. Add it a shop page. Click the check mark. Then sync with your remote GitHub. Now you're all set to make lots of money on the internet. Eventually, you would want to set up your own store and checkout system online so you can get more of a commission from your sales. Because you won't make a lot of money via Redbubble, but it is a great way for your audience to be able to buy your products and make a little cash on the side.